Hey, you're listening to the Reversing Climate Change podcast. I'm Ross Kenyon. I'm the creative editor and one of the co-founders of the Nori Carbon Removal Marketplace. I have Siobhan Montoya-Lavender here with me. Hey, Siobhan. Hey, Ross. Hey, we're doing this little canned intro because we've been trying to do these warm opens on the show for the Meme Lab Writer's Room Friday. It's almost like if you're having a happy hour after work, you work in carbon removal, you still want to be around carbon removal, but maybe not the kind of show you want to be taking notes during. That's what we're doing, right? Broadly, Siobhan. That's what we're doing. Please grab a drink and join us if this is your Friday happy hour indeed. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's working in the way that we are intending. And I hope you enjoy it. And uh, we forgot to do this when we were talking to Jack Andreessen of Breakthrough just now, <laughs> who's also a high meme lord. So anyways. He'd forgive us. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that even needs to happen right now? Can we just send people into this? Was this even necessary? I don't know. I don't know. Here we go. Meet Jack Andreessen. Okay, here he goes. Bye-bye. You're listening to the Reversing Climate Change podcast by the team at Nori, the carbon removal marketplace. This is a show about the innovators and entrepreneurs developing solutions to climate change. Yeah, so what? So you're at Breakthrough, is that what you're saying? Jack, Jack and Dreesen, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, Breakthrough Energy. So it's um, yeah, been there since... October of uh, of last year, and I've really enjoyed it. Nice. You were saying that you get a little less spicy than Breakthrough Institute, <laughs> and people confuse you. Do, you. do you get like mean tweets by accident ever? No. I mean, usually we just um will get quoted in a in a news article or something, and they'll just like errantly put in Breakthrough Institute. But yeah, we we don't have quite the hot takes that the institute comes out with. Well, why not? It's the internet. Jeremy. Yeah. What's what's preventing you from the hot takes? What's holding you back? <laughs> Oh, it's just, I'm just not a hot take guy. I just, uh, I, I can't handle the heat. I, I would, uh, I would immediately relent under the pressure of, of Twitter mobs coming for me. So I, uh, I, I know myself and stay in my own lane. Fair mm. enough. I was trying to think like, what's the opposite of a hot take? And I thought cold soup, uh, I was going to call you gazpacho's Jack. Is that, that's very yeah. I don't, is that's, that, did I ever call you that before? Gazpacho's no, but I have been, um, after the whole, you know, gazpacho police debacle that happened earlier this year with Marjorie Taylor Greene instead of Gestapo saying gazpacho, my fiance and I have thought about doing gazpacho police as a Halloween costume idea. Wow, there's like a soup Nazi angle in there. There's there's a whole lot of different directions to take it. What would you even dress as? You know, I, I think I would uh, maybe find a tomato to dress as, and then maybe she would be a mason jar or something um i you know we're still workshopping it but i think there would definitely have to be some sort of like signifier that we were gazpacho and then maybe like a police hat as well so yeah you know that's we got a we got a month two months here to work through that but yeah it's uh it's early on i like that you're forward thinking in this i feel like i'm such a last minute halloween planner so i like that you're on top of this yeah i like to pin when like very uh pop culture or otherwise like memes happen throughout the year to say, you know, this could be, this could be fun niche Halloween costume. Gosh, fun niche Halloween costume. I feel like a lot of the pop culture ones, they, uh, they don't age very well and they're kind of forgettable. What even happens? That's, that's what we like about them in that, like maybe 5% of people get it. And that's, but the 5% who do really appreciate it. That to me is the real, I do CDR memes online. And that is like the, that is the poster child for not very many people get it, but those in the know sort of appreciate it. So it's just that, that is sort of becoming a personality trait, I suppose. I feel like niche humor is the way to go. We've thought about doing broader climate tech memes and they're not funny to us. It's like when do a solar panel joke, someone else is doing it. No one else is doing the hardcore CDR takes. We know our place, right, Jeff? We do. We, we stay in our lane. Yeah. Lanes, mm-hmm. lanes are important and, and niche CDR memes are uh, it's the way of the future, truly. Now I'm feeling like it. I need a niche CDR costume, though, now. Now that we've mixed costume uh-huh. and memory, I'm like, I should do something CDR. And then, yeah, no one will get it. But the five people out of 100 that see me that will, will think I'm awesome. I've thought about just going as like the Climeworks stock photo. <laughs> Oh man, we it haunts us that climb work stock photo. Oh, 
God, we we've um we were talking with Jason Hockman about this at the DAT Coalition about wanting to do memes about how it's the only images available to journalists writing about direct air capture. We we're like, how meta can we make this, and how many people would get it? It's not like you would get it if we made a joke about how that's the only image available. Is it just you? <laughs> No, I think, I mean, with, with other people I talk to in like the CDR community, it's very much like everyone understands. And, and like, I, I have a great admiration for Climeworks, obviously it's a technology company, um, but also cornering the stock photo market is not, not a strategy that I, a business strategy that I knew existed and just complete credit to them for really hammering that out. I mean, there were, you know, the sort of three first gen DAC companies with carbon engineering Climeworks and, and Global Thermostat, and, and everybody had the opportunity to get stock photo out there and, and become a living meme, and, and Climeworks did it first. If you go on Adobe's stock footage site, I, like the, yeah, I forget the name of it exactly, but I was on there recently for a project. It's like, oh, I'm pretty sure Climeworks, are they, are they monetizing it? Did someone else just do this and they're monetizing it? Someone's making money off of it. I spent money getting it, some of these, so... Olivine beaches. Who else is looking for olivine beach footage except for me? There's not that many people out there, but someone is. Someone knows, like five years from now, ten years from now. There's a market yeah, so, to be cornered. People who are listening, go start your <laughs> CDR stock photo, you know, collections now. Yes, yes. I've had this idea with, and it's not my idea. People are doing it now, but the the idea is like being the Johnny Apple seed of class six and class two wells, and just getting a bunch of permits, buying a bunch of well and, and reservoir access for when CDR does scale. That's what Johnny Appleseed did, right? Went out and planted apples. So people would, as they populated the, the Western US, they would then take these apples and, and make hard apple cider with them. And so he was like ahead of the population growth. And I feel like this is another example of the Johnny Appleseed uh, business strategy, which is to buy all the rights to the stock photos of, of CDR technologies. And also what, just depleted wells that can run in reverse, the goal? Yes, yes. Class two wells would obviously be the, the volume play in terms of number of wells, just the permits are easier to get, but class six wells give you the volume of uh, storage. So, you know, whatever, maybe maybe there's a hedge, you, you do a little bit of both, buy some basalt in uh, in Pacific Northwest and and just be ready to be the, the corner store for all things geological storage in the United States. You're, you're putting the ideas out there, man. People are going to scoop these ideas up. I think you're onto something though, because I honestly do think we talk a lot about like scaling the market, but we don't talk a lot about like the downstream supply chain needs for that market, or we don't talk about it enough, I would say. So I think any business that's looking towards what will gigaton level carbon removal need as like a transport service or a crushing service, or just like one little piece of that whole picture of that whole process from you know, removal to storage. I think those those are some uh, some diamonds in the rough. Some CDR companies are going to come out. Yeah, there's going to be a huge ecosystem. I'm sure that springs up on things that you never would have expected. There's going to be what like domain squatters online. You're like that, but for CDR, cool. Thanks, Jack, for the horrible idea you just put out into the universe. I'm going to buy oil for pennies on the dollar and then resell them for a fortune. Ooh, look at all the value. <laughs> Oil well flipper. All the Georgists are going to come after your head. Get ready for that. I love this. I hope. Um. Uh, yeah, I would love nothing more than to to spur, you know, an industry of uh, fundamentally taking ship hosting from real life into you know the you know as as a business strategy where you just buy up all the domains, wells, you know, whatever. The first corner CDR merch, CDR streetwear. CDR sneakers. I mean, let's go, let's go, you know, all the way throughout all the sectors. Let's not limit ourselves. Do you think Dolly and any of these AI generated images, could our jobs be replaced yet, Siobhan, of CDR memory? Are we safe? Jack, are we safe? No one is safe. <laughs> no one is safe? Are we in trouble? Well, what what Dolly won't tell you is that Myself and another a number of other people in the CDR community, anytime a CDR technology is put into Dolly, they just um, they email me and then we all draw these. So a peel back behind the curtain is that it's uh, it's it's real people coming up with these. Yeah, so I, I put in there like Donald Duck pumping CO2 into submarine lithosphere. That's you? You made that's that? me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. All, all right. Good to know. Got the inside track yeah. now. Jack, wait, Jack, what drew you to CDR? Like, yeah, step back a minute. Like, what drew you to CDR? Because you're you're deeply involved in the space. 
Um, you know, the ins and outs, you have a very dry CDR humor that I'm enjoying, but like, where was the impetus to get into this industry? So I, I guess I sort of studied CDR. My undergrad was in biology, but I, I looked at birds and then the interaction between birds and plants. And then as I like towards graduation, my, my work was on um, carbon sequestration and resource allocation in, in oak shrubs. And so that was the first kind of insight into like the carbon cycle within plants and, and how a plant might allocate carbon to particular things like acorn production on the species I was working on. And then I went and taught school. I had a senior year crisis and realized I didn't want to be an ecosystem ecologist or a plant physiologist um, into grad school. So I went and did Teach for America, taught school for two years in Eastern Washington State. It was awesome. Middle school science, nobody is more honest than a middle schooler. So I learned a lot about speaking in front of people and, and no crowd I've ever spoken in front of will ever match the brutality of, of my <laughs> second period class my first year. It was, um, it was a bloodbath. It was horrible. What did they say? I, I hope. Did, they, did they appreciate your dry humor? No, they didn't. I think it was a little too dry. They would just like bag on my clothing all the time. They would like, they'd be like, that jacket doesn't fit you. I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, it does. Like, it does fit me. And I don't take fashion advice from an eighth grader. I, I mean, I didn't wear the jacket after that, to be fair um, to them. They <laughs> How could you? Uh, you should but, have worn it every day and just, yeah. just worn them down. This is yeah. not like that season of The Wire where Press Belusky goes and starts teaching and just everyone. Is that what was your experience sounds like? It was like The Wire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was basically The Wire. So no, I, I had a two, two great years, decided to go back to grad school at Indiana University. And while I was there, I had a, um, a mentor who I still talk to today. John Rupp is his name. He's a former petrol geologist um, and worked at my graduate school. And he hooked me up with a, uh, a job doing research at uh, Indiana Geological and Water Survey where I learned about geological sequestration, wrote a very unimpressive report on saline aquifers and the level of salinity within a saline aquifer because there's a, you can, it has to be a certain level of salinity before you can inject into it because if it's not salty enough, it could be used as drinking water. And so it has to be very salty in order to inject um, CO2 into it. And then that was sort of my like carbon capture director capture, like that was like getting carbon capture pilled sort of the, the moment of, I was like, and even more so than carbon capture was really getting like storage pilled. And I was yeah. like, wow, this, uh, is, this is the coolest thing on planet earth. We can, we can pump carbon, hence where it came from. It's wild that this is a, a technology that is available to us. Yeah. And that was, so that is, that is the genesis, that moment of working at the Indiana Geological Survey. And, and yeah, from then on, it's, it's been pretty pretty much no holds barred. Siobhan, he's using the pill suffix. So he's a creature of the internet. You, know? <laughs> you just Indeed. came to the internet. He <laughs> grew out of it, sounds like. He also will always win us over with self-deprecation by telling us it was a, a paper <laughs> of little note. Ross and I already like you more. <laughs> I mean, it was, it can, it can really only be described as middling. I was handheld through the entire thing by, by actual geologists giving me like a crash course in, in geology over, over the course of a year. Yeah. Christian Medina and Kevin Allen, shout out. Thank you so much for holding my hand through all of the truly terrible work that I did. Appreciate you. But it was, um, yeah, super consequential. I worked at Duke Energy for a little while and then, uh, yeah, moved over to Breakthrough last October and have been working on CCS, industrial decarbonization, director capture and CDR ever since. So it's been a, it's been a great opportunity to work through an, with an org that not only is a foundation and funds so much good work, but also on the venture capital side of it is, is you know, literally invested in, in director capture and, and storage companies. Carbon engineering was, was the, the, only the first. I imagine there's been subsequent downstream investments, right? Yeah. So carbon engineering isn't actually... Invested in through Breakthrough Energy Ventures. There's is it Bill, um, is it Bill personally who invested in Yeah, it's, a, it's another Gates organization. Oh, wow. I actually don't know if it's through Gates Ventures or not, but Breakthrough is invested in Sustera, Mission Zero Technologies, Verdox, and Heirloom uh, are the director capture companies. Cool. And then um, they also have 4401, the ultra mineralization. Okay. Oh, yeah, that one's cool. What exactly do you do there, Jack? 
Yeah, so I uh, the official title is what is it? Manager of Carbon Management Policy. Um, no, it looks we, like the snarky Twitter bio <laughs> version. Huh? Oh, uh, Carbon Middle Management views based and cringe. Um, we just kisses for Jack. Okay. Yeah, I found out my my fiance is really great about keeping up to date on TikTok and and what the youth are doing. She keeps mm-hmm. up to date with the youth language, and she let me know that they had been using mid as an insult. And so I thought it was only right because I am certainly very mid that uh, I should embrace carbon middle management as like a job title. Oh, yeah. For real, for real. As they say, yeah. it just hits different. Yeah. Yeah. Got, middle management hits different. So at Breakthrough, we fund um, and, and write grants out to a, to a number of different organizations in sort of the carbon management space. We work with uh, members of Congress try to find areas of research that the CDR space might need um, and provide funding for that. And then we try to maintain a public presence through the comms team or memes. Or you memes. Do you do this? Is this something that you have permission to do or you just, you've gone rogue? This conversation right now? <laughs> no, not a lot. Well, maybe. I've, I've certainly had to get permission for such things, but I mean the memes, the, the CDR uh, comms the memes. Uh, yeah, no, I've I've had nothing but you know good feedback from the comms team on on the memes. Like I said, I, I try to keep these relatively uh, above the board. Maybe I should get an alt for the the real spicy uh, memes. Uh, become like a you know, there's so many there's so many alts out there that maybe I should start one. Up. But yeah, yeah, no, they've been nothing but super supportive. Uh, to your point about like people engaging earnestly with the memes, there have been some times where like like people have responded in such a way where they're like providing critique to the meme on like the factual, like down to the percentage or something in front. They're like, mm-hmm. well, you know, we can only do like anywhere from like five to 10% removals. And my like response is always like, yes, I'm aware. I like, I do this every day of my life. I work and like, <laughs> I know I like, and, and it's always, I, I just always want to respond with the, my brother in Christ meme, like my oh, brother in Christ. Like, I work in this every day. I'm very clear of the economic, ecological, physical system boundaries of all sorts of like CDR as it exists today and the MRV challenges associated with certain, like, trust me, I am inundated with it 24 seven. I have to be asked not to talk about it when I'm not outside of work because it's all I do. Like yeah. it's a, uh, yeah. but I do respect responding earnestly to a meme that takes a level of either delusionment or confidence that I don't know if I have. And um, I love that. It is I hear you. Nice. Yeah. Go ahead, Siobhan. What no, I doing? think I think that was well said. I think we can just plus one that. Um, we oftentimes don't really know how to respond when people critique our memes. Is it like, and you know, we've talked about this before, like sometimes it's just people are just missing the joke. Um, and we're like, haha, it was sarcasm, but you can't say that because then you're just explaining your own joke and you're an idiot. Yeah, but so we, we, we walk that, yeah. that path sometimes, but I think you just summarized it well. I want to ask you, so you've been in this field for a little bit and you started, and I think you started, you know, in the same way that a lot of us discovered CDR and we were like, holy shit, this is amazing. This is so exciting. This is, this technology is going to change the world. This is so powerful. I think a lot of us started there. I certainly started from that perspective and I still hold on to that. I think in most of what I do. But was there a point when you started to get a little jaded? Because I think there's a point in which all of us, we start to get a little jaded. Has, has there been like a jaded story to go along with your CDR discovery story? I mean, other than just constantly being tired of having to qualify all of the things that if you work in the CDR space, like you eventually have to qualify in, in conversations to, to the extent that like, yes, we need to reduce emissions, you know, anywhere from 90 to 95 percent and removals will be used, you know, to clean up sort of residual emissions or very hard to abate emissions. And like going through this laundry list, this like checklist of like, okay, these are all the things that people should know publicly about CDR. It's not a silver bullet. It should not be used as as an excuse to to burn more fossil fuels. All of these things, I I feel like 90 percent of the time I'm having these conversations with people, not in the CDR space because we all know this, but outside of the CDR space. And I'm like, all you needed to do was read like one article or one piece that like Zeke has put out and you would like hear all, like 
you've done zero research and you're bagging down this conversation with the least interesting questions. Like there are really fun places in CDR where there's a lot of unanswered questions. And I think that's my, my jaded moment of just constantly having to defend. My favorite part of it is being accused of being in like an oil and gas show. Cause I also talk about CCS and, and mainly in the CDR space, I talk about direct air capture and, um, being accused of being an oil and gas shill is actually one of my favorite things. Um, I think it's hilarious that people, if I was truly a big oil and gas shill, I would not be posting bad memes on Twitter. I would be enjoying a mansion somewhere, li- like living the life. I don't know what they do, but I, I would certainly not be middling memes on Twitter for sure. Middling. Come on. There was a Google hunting one I saw the other day. That was pretty funny. That... <laughs> You know, every once in a while, there's there's a stroke. There's a stroke. I take your point really is on point, though. I think we do spend a lot of time in this industry because it's a new industry and it's really unknown to a lot of people. And so a lot of people, what they know about CDR, what they know is maybe only CCS or maybe they know about CDR, but maybe they only know about, I mean, how have we not talked about the John Oliver piece that came out last week? I feel like that's a lot of fodder for discussion. And I think a lot of mainstream audiences are seeing pieces like that. And I think to his credit, you know, I don't think there was like wild inaccuracies in that piece. When I watched that piece, I kind of thought, okay, this is making me question other pieces he does. Because once you really know an industry and someone's doing like a deep dive into that industry, the way I read it was like, okay, this is true. And it's incredibly selective, right? Like we're doing a really selective deep dive and making it seem like it's a deep dive of an entire industry. And so I think that that is often what we're up against in CDR. And as people trying to communicate in the space is we're up against a lot of misinformation and we're just up against a lot of people just not, as you pointed out, like there's just a lot of people that will come at you with something. And it's like, wow, if you just read like one little thing, or it's like, you know, on, uh, on open air, when every time they have one of their, this is CDR, they start with like the disclaimers, you know, and like CDR is not a replacement for like decarbonization and et cetera, et cetera. And we kind of all have to live doing that. We like walk around with these like living disclaimers of of our industry and i wonder i mean i i assume that will change over time as the industry grows you could just do the sith kermit thing but we're gonna get yeah we never have to (laughs) yeah i mean it will change i think necessarily over time as people become more familiar with um with the technologies and the the sort of risks challenges and opportunities associated with each one but yeah it's just a constant deluge of trying to suss through an incredible amount of uncertainty in a nascent industry with also it being very clear that we need it. And so my usual response to people is like, okay, compared to what? Like there's all these challenges or risks associated with CDR technologies with, you know, this piece with supply chains with all these things. And it's like, yes, okay. And we need to solve them. Constant criticism and saying how CDR will never work, CDR will never scale, CDR is never going to make it, like we don't know X, Y, Z. It's like, these are all fair criticisms, but it should be a criticism then levied with a possible solution or a sort of way forward, whereas it tends to just be like, uh, yeah, we don't ever think this will work. And and a lot of the arguments, the same arguments that were were strolled out against solar and wind um, and technologies yeah. early on in the 70s and 80s when when these were kicking off like it's it's the same like it'll never scale costs are too high uses too much power too inefficient capacity factors too low i mean you go down a list and, and we've we've seen all these before so it's fun though it's it's i like it i like the the slightly agitated nature that especially people get online with it I think many of those objections are fair too. Like, will it actually follow the same cost curve as solar? I don't know. Um, It sure would be nice. I sure hope so. But also I'm not ideologically bought in or pre-committed to that. But I feel like the dictates of online arguing demand you commit yourself to some camp like this where I'm like, I am a booster of it and I hope it figures itself out and we have some time to figure it out. And I'm willing to give it a little bit of levity, given that so many smart people are working on this, that I think it will. I think that's true across the space too, but uh, that's not true of everyone. I feel like there's a lot of uh, hostility from various directions. I feel like I'm being quite oblique here, but um, I don't mean to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. And I saw a tweet, was it last week from Alex Grant, and and I like Alex a lot, and Big Lithium on Twitter, if you're looking for him, he said something to the tune of like, when 98% of CDR 
companies or maybe DAC companies particularly fail. Um, I'm so glad they'll, I think it was DAC companies because they'll be trained in like mineral extraction or, or something this regard will, will help that. And I think that's great. Yeah. Like we, a lot of these skills are transferable and, and yeah, this is the, the story of every industry everywhere is a lot of the companies are going to fail and that's okay. We're going to learn a lot of things along yeah. the way. We're going to uh, get people into climate with like the excitement of the space. We're going to grow the amount of capital available for climate investing. Like these are all good things. And, and knowing that some companies are going to fail is fine. Of course they will. Like this is the way it works. And acknowledging our own flaws. I think, I think we use memes a lot for that actually. And like humor in general is like poking fun at our own, like lack of knowledge around MRV or lack of knowledge around, you know, supply chains, whatever it is, whatever the thing that we don't know is, I think it's always a fun, that's always good meme fodder. If it's something that like, I don't really know what the solution is or how we're going to figure that out. I like to always put fun of that. If we had all those answers, this would be a terribly boring place to work. I would move on to something else. Why would you work in something where it was easy and predictable? I feel like part of the fun here is that it is a little bit of a wild west. Yeah. yeah. I did want to ask you, Jack, given that we're in this little like jaded territory thing that Siobhan interviewed, yeah. but we put up a, a meme today here. I'll even show it to you. And I want to get your, your <laughs> gazpacho Jack take on it. <laughs> really not that good of a joke guys. Uh, okay. Oh yeah. I saw this one. Yeah. So uh, it's um, what is this from again, Siobhan? Tangled. Tangled. I saw the scene. That's the Rapunzel one you were saying, right? It's a Rapunzel one. It's fun. You'll, it's, uh, it works for adults too. And the question at the top, so there's swords all around this gentleman's head and the caption Flynn said, Ryder, for those of you that know. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> thanks for that. What CDR opinion would put you in a situation like this with so many swords pointed at your head? I can even broaden this out beyond CDR if you want, just environmentally speaking. But what do you got, Jack? Siobhan, I'm pretty sure you responded to this with, with a really good one that, that CCS, what is it, is will be necessary like should like receive ccs oh, is needed yeah. and should be funded that was a courageous yeah, one yeah, I, it was i yeah. thought that was a brave moment in my twitter life yeah that was yeah i would definitely take that i would ccs is such a pivotal technology for a number of different hard to decarbonize sectors and in fact i think it's historically gotten too little funding relative to the amount of emissions reductions that it could incur so you look at the emissions from from steel from cement from pulp and paper, you know, go down the list of all these industrial applications. And then like you have all the industrial emissions that could potentially be reduced. And then you go into things like alum cycle, natural gas facilities. Um, like you have a net power facility in Texas that injected onto the air cut grid and has claimed, I think, 99% capture of, of emissions and injection. And so relative to their potential to re reduce emissions, I think that they're pretty drastically underfunded and, and that's what you need. I mean, there's a lot of public uh, admonishment around CCS, especially on, on the coal sector, coal power sector, CCS facilities like, like Petronova. Yeah. And, and, and legitimately. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, legitimate, and, and, and legitimate legitimate criticism. That, like that, that deserve legitimate criticism, but it's, it's just, there's this, I think for me, what, what is difficult for people. And, and I totally understand why this, this is difficult is that these facilities are generally very expensive and they're also learning facility. These are right. These are like test cases for CCS. These are oh, demonstration nice. projects to and pilots mm -hmm. to a point. And so it's like, you know, a pilot for like a new solar facility is, is going to be magnitudes cheaper than a pilot for a CCS. And yet they both lead to emissions reductions. And so this, this mismatch on the cost of, of pilots and demonstrations. And then the fact that CCS is, is tied to oil and gas has led to an, an understandable public frustration with the technology. But given the need for it and where the alternatives are for some of these, where they're at in their technological readiness level for things like, um, you know, completely green, net zero, maybe net negative cement. That's why I posted the other day that we produce 11 million tons of cement a day globally. And we're just like, we're not even the ballpark of that scale. And so we're like, we're going to need CCS, at least in the short to medium term, and it needs to have project financing to be able to get there. Anyway, that's the gazpacho jack take that's on that. I'm trying to think of a CDR. Come on, man. Yeah, okay. You, you just stole uh, Siobhan's. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I got one for you. I think that the for all of the CDR technologies that may be using electricity, I think that current 
concerns about the fossil fuel intensity of grids in the United States are sort of uh, overblown for the use of electricity to, to, to power the CDR, namely because grids are getting greener every year. You can look at interconnection queues across the different ISOs and RTOs in the U.S., and, and there's just they're chocked full of batteries, wind and solar. And second, I think that a lot of these facilities in the future will be using behind the meter, behind the meter power rather than drawing from the grid itself. So I think that specific criticism of power usage is just overblown alongside of the new technologies, the new companies that are coming out are just greatly reducing power usage. So I I just don't see that as an issue in in 20 to 25 years. I see that criticism mostly with regard to, I'm quoting, rich people buying Teslas, being like, ha ha, your grid is coal powered and you're dumb. Is that sort of uh so you do think that yeah yeah it's the same idea but you know people um and understandably they look at the sort of like first generation specifically direct air capture companies and they go wow they use like a ton of power and it's like well yeah and all of the next generation can see that and know that they can drive costs out of this and they're doing it right now and greens grids are getting greener and with the power usage that they would need i think it will very much make economic sense to put these um have behind the meter power resources for these so i, I don't think I just don't think it's going to be as big of an issue as as some people would like the public to believe. One other one I have too. Have I talked about them on the podcast? You've heard me gripe about this before, Siobhan. But uh, I think solar and wind are super ugly. <laughs> like aesthetically, hideous. Hideous. And when I drive across places that have them, I am gobsmacked by the ugliness. And I like this idea that it's supposed to, there's like a brainwashing element to it where I'm like supposed to ideologically think it's beautiful because it's pretty magical and pretty good. But also you can't like override your sense of beauty by some ideological concern for this. I buy that on solar. I I do find wind farms incredibly aesthetically pleasing. I'm from uh, Hmm. the beautiful, but you know, flyover state of Nebraska. And driving through Nebraska and Iowa, looking across what otherwise would be cornfields as far as the eye can see, which are in their own way, incredibly beautiful. There is something nice to see, you know, they're flat, those states are flat. And so you only see the tops of corn, depending on what uh, year it is, or barren fields until they're planted. But to have this sort of new vertical that you can now observe is is like, you know, truly broadening the horizons of all the peoples of the the Great Plains states. I wonder if there's some future where this could be made because if i feel this way and i broadly buy the renewables case as being important and necessary then i can't imagine someone who is even a little bit skeptical being like how many view sheds are going to get disrupted by this oh all of them unless you have a lot of nuclear power basically so i'm wondering what can be done about that we tried to make a meme didn't we where we were like for the people that hate the visual aesthetic of solar and wind, wait till you get director capture or something like that, <laughs> where we replaced the wind turbines with giant director capture machines, also arguably ugly or beautiful, depending. I like the nuance in this conversation here because like here we have, I'd say I'm pretty much in the middle here. I, I don't find them aesthetically pleasing, nor do I find them ugly. Um, I feel pretty neutral. And it's just interesting that you guys would have such deviating perspectives on the visual of wind farms. It's not that anything interrupting of natural space, whatever that means, is inherently bad uh, by my lights. But I was driving to Eastern Washington recently from Seattle. Just like, oh, I've also done that drive on the on the uh, ten many times between Arizona and California. When you get to Indio, Palm Desert, Morongo Pass, is like, it the flatness that you don't like? Do you like the hilly ones? Like I used to work on the Vasco Winds Next Era Energies project. And it's on Vasco winds. It's coming from the five to the 580. And it's like really, really hilly. And then it's dotted with wind turbines. And I do think there's something a little prettier about hills with wind turbines as opposed to flatland. Is there anything to that? I don't know. The pass in California is pretty hilly and even mountainous at points. It's like the original landscape. I'm going to offend someone probably. It's not that beautiful to start. (laughs) This is the swords question, remember? It's like the Mojave Desert is pretty barren relative to the Sonoran Desert uh, or, or even the Chihuahuan Desert. I feel like there's more going on. But like Mojave is pretty bleak. But even still, I find I like the... Although the alternative, though, is it's basically all cookie cutter homes besides that. So like what actually is getting getting taken down there? Besides an open pit mine, like, you know, if we're going to compare it 
to the alternative, right? As, as Jack was pointing out, like, what's, let's base this, let's base this criticism off of like, what is the current standard quo or what's the alternative? And like, what are your takes on open pit mines, for example? I flew over, um, is it Butte, Montana that has the real enormous one? I flew over whatever it is in Eastern Montana. I flew over it once and I was able to look right into it. And it was like some Mordor kind of shit. <laughs> it's frankly terrifying. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, um, it's um, the, the Berkeley pit in Butte. Oh, okay. Is that what that is? Yeah. Is it like the, the biggest super fun site in the country? I don't know if it is. In Eastern Washington State, you got the Hanford facility, which is a great super fun site. Yeah. Some, some, that was the big nuclear, early nuclear, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. I feel like a broken record on this one. And I kind of ham it up a little bit just to be a contrarian. Mostly oh, yeah, you have to. I mean, it also allies you and, and puts you next to the Kennedys and the Hamptons and hating wind and the oh. way it looks. So Ooh. that like, I feel like that's, uh, you know, that, that really gives you that sort of um, like East Coast blooded, elite red. Like when, when, yeah. yeah, when you find yourself uh, listening to, to James Taylor on your sailboat, you can park up next to somebody else and explain to them that you also hate the way wind turbines look and um they might in invite you to the 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 pay you know the, the paisley uh the paisley party or, or white party they're having later the that polo night. game yeah. we were just talking about this on did you guys watch succession no but i i started okay cover your ears siobhan okay well, actually i call her shiv mostly because of succession so hey there's True that story do you know like the the rich like npr family that they almost get bought by I love yeah. that there's this open question of whether or not they are actually better than uh, and like to what degree. I feel like that's the kind of family that would complain basically about wind farms, yet acting quite progressive at the same time and like patting themselves yeah, on the back. Is, is that kind of what yeah, this, yeah. I'm supposed to be taking from that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's definitely like the, um, you know, we are all for clean energy. It's just this location is adjacent to a, a game preserve or uh, a, some, I mean, you can just like run down the list of reasons why people oppose wind development. And, and I think, yeah, I think that they would make that, they would make that play. And then they might like, they might, you know, fund like a solar farm to be put elsewhere in the country to make up for it. I, I can see that too. Do you want to come back on sometime, Jack, and just maybe like make some memes live with us and goop around? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a worthwhile endeavor to increase the important communications with CDR technologies. God, I sure hope so. I'm, not sure, I'm like constantly amazed that I lucked into this as a paying work environment. I feel like I'm constantly like hunting for validation that this is something I should get paid for. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, yeah, this helps, right? Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I, I find now is, um, it's not a regret, but it is something that I've encountered many times is I'll run into people in real life and they'll go, oh, you're the, CDR DAC meme guy from Twitter. And I think I'm a serious professional with career aspirations. And I'm so much more than the DAC meme guy. And so I have to leverage like how many memes versus serious posts to let people know that I, I do know more than Goodwill hunting memes. I don't know, man. I think if I, if somebody came up to me as like, you're the DAC meme person, I'd be like pretty flattered. <laughs> your your content is oftentimes a hybrid and sophisticated and you show that you you have to have a fair amount of chops to make something that is funny to an audience that is knowledgeable about the subject area of the memes that's a pretty hard thing to fake that's what i was getting with the with the dolly like how could you possibly program that some of them come like in a moment like the goodwill hunting when i woke up in the middle of the night and made that meme it just like hit me and i was like i have to get this out and then other ones will like you know i'll work them with um a buddy of mine who I work with named James Hewitt, who has been putting out some pretty solid power sector memes, but we will workshop them with one another. Well, Jack Andreessen, uh, not of Breakthrough Institute, but Breakthrough Energy Ventures. Breakthrough Energy, I, I would, yeah. So Ventures, the venture capital team is, uh, is a separate entity than the foundation. So although we know the folks over there, yeah, we are importantly different. And if you have something mean to say about eco-modernism, you can text Jack <laughs> you know, tweet right at you. Is that you? Yeah, you can you can shoot me a text. I'll also, yeah, I'll take all the smoke on eco-modernism. By being in CDR, you're like almost necessarily an eco-modernist. So, you know, hit, hit me with it. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty fair assumption. Uh, thanks for hanging out, Jack. Uh, links to all of your, your stuff is on, well, all your stuff, your Twitter. You do other things, yeah. I'm, I'm told. Uh, yeah, every once in a while, I'll be on LinkedIn. I have a Substack I haven't written on in a while, but 
yeah, Twitter is where you can find me. Jack stuff is great too. We often retweet it. Yeah, follow Jack and we'll see this again sometime. Yeah, you've committed to coming back on. You're committed now. We're bringing you on again. I said it live, so, and I am a, a man of my word, so I'll do it. Cool. So thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this fun meme writer's room, carbon removal, happy hour, bant fest. Just bantering. It's fun to do this as opposed to something a little bit more serious. You get enough serious content. Hopefully this is refreshing for you. If not, you're probably not listening at this point anyways. But thanks so much for listening. Tell a friend. Give us a great rating and review on iTunes, now Apple Podcasts or Spotify, and have a lovely day. Thank you so much for listening. If you could please subscribe and give us a great rating and review on Apple Podcasts or a rating on Spotify, that'd be much appreciated. It helps us get our content out to more people. You can sign up for our newsletter at nori.com, follow us on social media, and we will catch you next time.